Well, let's start with the Jets because some very interesting things came out of camp, and that is the handling of Le'Veon Bell. He missed the entire 2018 season, and so now he's he's still fresh. That, that's a year that the Jets are hoping that they're going to have extra on this contract because he's going to be 27 years old. That's usually when running backs begin to see the other side of things. Running backs usually don't last in this league more, more than five, six, seven years, but they're hoping that that's going to benefit them down the road in this contract. But what I find interesting is they want to get him to play in the preseason. They want him to kick off the rust. That's what Adam Gase has, had said. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I think it's a good thing. I, I got to kick off the rust. He hasn't played. Do you want his first run or catch in anger to be in week one against Buffalo where he hasn't done that since the last game he played as a Steeler at the end of the 2017 you know, season? Or are you okay with that, that he, you don't touch him, you don't play him, you, you take off the bubble wrap in week one against Buffalo and see what you got? I think I vote for that. And, and uh, this came up on our show this morning on Get Up on ESPN. Diana Rossini was covering the Jets training camp for us, and she told me that, that Gay said that he planned to get Levy on some work during the preseason. And I'll say this, I understand that thought, but I'll take it the other side. The New York Jets have never had this player in my lifetime, okay? I was one, I was one year old when the Jets won the Super Bowl. So in my lifetime, the best player in the NFL has never been on the Jets. The Jets had Curtis Martin, who was a Hall of Famer and was a terrific player. But there is a level of dynamic quality to Le'Veon Bell that the Jets have literally never had in my lifetime. They had Wesley Walker, and they've had other players who were dynamic and great, some on the defensive side. But if you look at the numbers, Le'Veon Bell averages more yards rushing per game than Jim Brown, Walter mm -hmm. Payton, or O.J. Simpson. He averages more receptions per game than Chris Carter or Michael Irvin. He is both a Hall of Fame runner and Hall of Fame receiver. And he's on the Jets. That never happens. And if he gets hurt in a preseason game before he ever gets on the field in a game that matters, you will never hear from me again. <laughs> I, 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 as but, God is my witness, I will never recover from that. But that's, that's two different things. And quickly, we should mention that the third overall pick uh, Quinton Williams has signed with oh, the good. So good. We, we didn't think it was going to be any kind of a big deal. They didn't show up yesterday. And Gase had to address it, but he's in. He's signed, and you know, hopefully we'll get uh, him ready that when we go out there on Monday, maybe he one of the guys that Very we quickly, to. he is the third player in the last five years, the third time in five years, that the, the best player in the draft fell to the Jets where they picked. Mm -hmm. Third time, three, three times in five years. It's incredible that it did, but it happened with Leonard Williams. That was a draft in which everyone said he was the best player, right. he fell the six. Jamal Adams, everyone said he was the best player, he fell the six. And leading into this draft, I did three weeks of preview. I had every analyst that we have on the air. They all told me, Quinnen Williams is the best player in this draft, and he fell to us at three. I have, I'm very and, optimistic. And you can make the case, not that Sam Darnold was the best player in the draft, but you can make the case he fell to the Jets. Yes. I, I, I don't believe the, the Giants should have taken him at two. Absolutely. So I think that kind of falls into four of the last five years, where you could say that a player fell to them that they, he could have been taken earlier and he wasn't and the Jets can benefit from that but getting back to the bell you're talking like a fan with a history of this happening what happened to Chad Pennington a few years ago yeah. that you're just worried that this great gift that you got from the football gods is going to blow out his Achilles in the preseason in typical Jet fashion but you got to be realistic too he's going to have to get his reps he's going to have to learn to play with Sam Darnold and I'm not saying he's got to go out there play deep into the third quarter of the three preseason game you know try to go head to head with a linebacker and put himself in peril but I do think he should be out there I think he should be dressed I think he should play a couple a series, and then, yeah, you get him out of there, but I, I don't think he should be going out there and running the ball 25 times in a preseason Oh, game. no, of course. But you, but you can't put him in a box on the shelf and say, we'll see you week one, either. And there's part of me that wants to put him in a box, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> because I think that Le'Veon Bell serves two purposes for the Jets, and the reason I was completely in favor of them spending all the money that it took to bring him in is not because I believe he can lead the Jets deep into the playoffs this year, that they will win a championship necessarily during the time that he is earning the money on his contract, because I'm not not sure they can, but even if they don't, I think he can serve his purpose. Because I think a player like Le'Veon Bell is the single best way to help develop Sam Darnold. And the Jets are trying to accomplish two things at once this year. They're trying to win, and they're developing a young quarterback. And in the big picture, the development of the young quarterback should take precedence. That's the most important thing, because if you win games this year, that's good.
If Sam Darnold becomes a great quarterback, then you're going to win games for 15 years. Just look at Eli Manning and look at all the Ben Roethlisberger and all these other. If you turn your guy into that guy, so in some ways you could look at it as though the most important thing they can do is develop Sam Darnold this year. I believe Le'Veon Bell is an extraordinary piece to doing that. Jamison Crowder is an extraordinary mm -hmm. piece to doing that. So I think they need to preserve him, and I want to see him on the field early in the season and often. And I. Whether he plays one or two series in these preseason games or not, I can't imagine in the big picture is going to wind up making any difference. I understand your overall point, but I do think that if everything is done correctly, they can win with Bell.